Hey everyone, thank you for watching Star Morph, where we talk about artificial intelligence and web development. All right, in this video, we are going to jump into a GitHub repo that uses the Vercel AI SDK, as well as the OpenAI function calling API. And this is a template that we're gonna be diving into the code and modifying. And the two main awesome things that this template solves are first, the Vercel AI SDK has a lot of great built-in things here. One of the main things is streaming. And so if you're building chatbots that take a long time to re uh, return the message and you need it to stream in just like ChatGPT does, then the Vercel AI SDK has really good architecture for that already baked in and available in some of the templates here. So that's the first thing. The second thing it solves is we're able to get real-time data with function calling. So rather than putting in static embeddings from PDF files or text files, we can actually use the API, uh, the OpenAI function calling to do a live API call and get current data. So in this example, we're chatting with Hacker News. So we can run uh, this function on the back end that will return the top news story in Hacker News in natural language. And I just checked, this is the current top story on Hacker News. So this solves the issue of, you know, what if you want to make a bot on, you know, your company and you have customers signing up every day, so you can't load the PDFs in manually and you, you need to be able to query your own API to find constantly updating data we're going to modify this app to interact with another API to simulate how you could start to bring in real-time data from your API in this template. So let's go ahead and jump in the code. I've already cloned the repo. This repo was created by Stephen Tay, who, if you haven't checked out his work on GitHub and, and checked him out on Twitter, I highly recommend doing so. He works at Vercel and releases an amazing amount of really high quality TypeScript AI applications. So I've just cloned this repo, chat HN. And there's a few main files that we'll be working with in the repo here. So I'll just run over quickly a few of the main files that we'll need to dive into. The first and perhaps most important is the functions file here. And this is where we're gonna define the actual functions that we're going to use to call the API using the OpenAI functions API. So you can see here we have a function get story, and we'll dive into this more deeply in a minute. And then we have the the main homepage here, and this is more cosmetic um, kind of landing page. So you can see it says welcome to chat HN. So we'll change things like that so it, it fits our new purpose. And then we also have this route file here, which we're not going to need to change too much, but this is where a lot of the open AI logic and streaming logic is happening. So that's another key file. So first off, let's go ahead and just, well, first let's let's start up the app here and then we'll change some of the cosmetic stuff. So first I'm just gonna install the dependencies and get this app running locally. All right, there we go. And I think I'm gonna need my OpenAI key as well, so I'll just copy that. There we go. All right, now let's check to see that this is working. There we go. All right, and let's see that we can go ahead and correctly get the top news on Hacker News, top story. There we go. So everything's working okay locally. And so we're gonna modify this instead of interacting with the Hacker News API, we're going to modify it to get weather data as an example of another API. So just to demonstrate, if we ask the bot currently, please give me a three-day forecast for San Francisco. Okay, so it's saying it doesn't have 
the ability to provide real-time weather data. So using the API, we're going to be able to change that. All right, so let's go in and start modifying the code. So first, we'll just change some of the cosmetic stuff. So anywhere where it mentions Hacker News. Okay, so this is the examples of the questions here. So you can see these are the three kind of shortcut examples. And we're not going to be using these, so I'm going to take two of them out. And then we're going to replace this with, please, or give me a three-day forecast. Okay, so we'll change that example. We can see that updated. All right, we're going to call this star weather. Not a great name, but you get the idea. AI chatbot that uses open AI functions to interact with a public weather API. All right, there we go. That's the cosmetic stuff, star weather. And now let's do the real stuff. We'll go over to functions. And I'm going to, for simplicity's sake, get rid of all of these functions except for one. So I'm going to keep get story. So we'll delete this one. And we'll delete story with comments. And we'll delete summarize stop top story. So here we have kind of a JSON outline in natural language of the functions. And then we have the actual function definitions here. And then we have this run function, function that's kind of choosing which one of the above functions to run. So we'll continue removing these for simplicity's sake so we can start to modify them. We'll take out these two. And before I take this out, I do want to note one thing, which is that when you're calling these functions, you still have to adhere to the context limit of GPT. So doing something like this mapping where um, you're getting a list of stories and then returning each individual story separately and kind of mimicking the chunking that you would do when you load in an embedding, I think is a good strategy because you can't hit an API and return 50,000 characters that would be over the context limit. So I just wanted to mention that before I delete some of this um, more advanced function examples, but we'll get rid of these. Okay. All right, so now we have one basic function, get story. And we're going to change this to get forecast. Okay, and then up here we'll change it as well. Okay, get a forecast from a public weather API for a city. Okay, and then we're going to take in a string and that string instead of the story from Hacker News is going to be the city. All right, and now this is where we're actually calling the API here. So you can see we are hitting this URL Hacker News that is a Firebase database of Hacker News uh, stories. And we're dynamically selecting the ID here in this function, depending on the natural language given um, in the request, I believe. So we're going to change this URL to not interact with Hacker News, but instead interact with this public weather API. And you can see this URL is a API endpoint that has a JSON uh, output. And we, we need it to be JSON because that's how the function calling API works is the model, the large language model will intelligently choose to output a JSON that calls the functions. 
So um, the LLM itself isn't calling the function, but the LLM will generate JSON to call this function here. So like, in a, for example, the LLM will populate this argument ID, which will be put in here and then dynamically call this function uh, depending on the how the LLM determines this argument. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this URL and we'll replace this. And then instead of San Francisco here, we're gonna put that ID argument back in. So that will dynamically select the city. Okay. And I believe we also, we're gonna to return too much data here because this um, JSON here is way too long. So we actually only wanna return say, the current condition, I need to change something else. Yes, okay, we have, we still have get story down here. What we need is get forecast. Okay, so I just changed the function here a little bit to include only the current condition of the data returned. And then now we can go to our chatbot and say, give me a forecast in San Francisco. There we go. And if we go to back to the API, we should see the data line up. So right now it is feels like 66 degrees and it is it is 66 degrees. So there we go, it feels like 66, 66 humidity. So it is pulling the current data from the API. So there we go. That's what we have to do in order to integrate your own API calls and get real-time data in natural language in the Vercel AI SDK. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.